Hello Duelists, welcome to MSDTV Live Duel. We have an exciting match coming up for you with Necroz versus Cliffords. First, I must put out this disclaimer. This is an exhibition proxy match, which means proxies were used for Necroz. Remember that no official tournament or store event will allow proxies in play. These were quality made proxies, so they look really good on camera. And you might not even be able to tell the difference, but they are proxies. This duel was done for demonstration purposes only, and please support the official release. For this match, we have Tombox playing Necroz versus Oscar playing Cliffords. Alright, let's get started here. Alright, the player with the teal sleeves would be Tombox, that would be me, and the player with the red sleeve is Oscar. Now, I've proxied the deck only to get a better sense of the deck when playing in real life. Now the difference between playing on with a proxies than playing on DN is that playing on DN people just rage quit half the time. It is much more realistic to play with actual cards. You get a physical feel for it and you get a better sense of how you react to your opponent, you know, such as things like that. It adds up to the dueling experience at the end. Now we go for the dice roll, Oscar rolls a 3, Tombox also rolls a 3. We roll, he rolls a, Oscar rolls a 6, Tombox gets a 5, Oscar will be going first. Now Tombox does have a slight advantage in this matchup for the game 1. He has been practicing this deck quite a bit, and he is very familiar with the Clifford deck. Oscar is not as familiar with this matchup, although he has been practicing against uh, Tombox for quite a bit, but that was on Dueling Network. Let's see how he would react to Tombox's playstyle in real life. Now he opens up with a carrier, equips a sacrifice, plays a laser clip to get a double summon, tributes for the stealth to bounce his laser clip back, sacrifice activates, and now he'll search a scout. That was an, so he was forcing a scout search in his early turn. Uses scout's effect, pays 800 life points. Now what will he search? He searches another sacrifice. Offers the cut, I think that's the end of his search. Sets one card and passes his turn. Now what could he actually set? If it's a floodgate, that would be trouble for Tombox. And Tombox is carefully considering his play, but he does look like he has a Manju in hand. Yes, he's summoning a Manju. Effect? Now, no chaining, so there might not be a skill drain here. Uh, Tombox is carefully considering his hand first before searching. Uh, normally, when a Necros player does open with a Manju, they could usually follow up with a Unicorn with a Kaleido Mirror. And there is a Unicorn in hand. What could he possibly be considering? Oh, there is a possibility that he wants to open with a Trishula. Now, Oscar did re-add that laser clip back to his hand, now he does have one card in graveyard, one card in hand, and cards on the field. That could be a fatal misplay on his part if he actually does go for a, a Trishula play, as there is no skill drain in sight. Now he's still considering, why wow, he's taking quite a bit of time on this one, he does have an advantage and has a full hand of Necros monster as well. As well as I think I believe I saw a preparation of rights. Tombox definitely opened the nuts on this game. So he opens with a Bryanac. Offers a cut. What is the card in his hand? Oh, it's a Clasolus. I think he's gonna search one of his ritual spells here. Oh, confirms the Bryanac. Discards the Clasolus to add a Necros ritual spell now. Is he gonna go for the Kaleido Mirror or the Exo Mirror? Cycle will be a bit of a waste. He goes for the Exo Mirror. I'm oh, sorry, I guess now in TCG this card is just called Necros Mirror. So he adds the mirror to hand. Discards the Bryanac. I believe he's going for the Trishula play here. Yes, he definitely caught on that Oscar does have a card in hand and one card in grave. This is actually going to be very big if the Trishula does land into play. He plays the Necroz Mirror, and there is no emptiness to be activated. Banishes both Kosalus and Bryanac. Bryanac does resolve. 
This is really bad for Oscar. Which which card is he gonna banish for the field? Oh, he goes for the monster. So he's allowing Oscar to get a Clifford search from sacrifice. Now it is you should note that when fighting against Clifford's, you should always do as much damage as you can, and it looks like Tombox can do massive damage on this turn. Like even if he does add a scout, like he already has a scout, so adding another scout would not have any benefit. But if you can actually make it the scout be useless by doing too much damage to him or make it too risky to use, then you know you're in a really good spot when fighting against Cliffords. So Oscar adds a disc to hand now. He might be trying a counter play here. Now they're considering his play. Oh, I think he's going to go for the preparation of rights here. Yes, the preparation will allow him to add Ritual Monster level 7 or lower to his hand, which is pretty much any card. Now what is he going to add? I, I think I see in his hand a Decisive Armor. It adds a gun near to prevent the destruction of one of his monsters. And he will also add the Necroz Mirror. Please do remember that uh, you can actually act every preparation of rights without a ritual spell in the graveyard. So he goes for the swing, 14 and 27. Oscar's not looking too good here. With a two card hand and one scout search available, what could he possibly do? With his face down, most likely now being read as an MST. If it was a Vanity's Emptiness or a Skill Drain, it would have been activated already, as like the previous play put him at a serious disadvantage. He activates the Scout Search, pays another 800 life points. What could he possibly search now? Is he going to complete his scale and then go try to summon his disc? So he adds a Monolith. I guess he's trying to recover more cards if his play does go through. He's going to Pendulum Summon two cards, a Scout and a Carrier. Carrier does get a bounce if he does it. Now he Tribute Summons for Disc. Now he gets a two card draw with Monolith at the end of the turn. Oscar's considering whether or not he actually wants to activate Carrier to bounce a card. If he bounces a card, a Manju would mean another search for Tombox, and bouncing the Trishula would possibly mean another Trishula play. And he is drawing cards with Monolith, that means the Trishula plate will go through. He is not bouncing with Carrier, instead he is going straight to Disc. And he does a swing. But Tombox has a damage step, hand trap, decisive armor, and Oscar scoops the game. Game 1 goes to Tombox. This game probably would have turned out completely differently if Oscar did not bounce his laser clip back to his hand. Without Trishula on board, Tombox would probably have to use Gungnir to pop the sacrifice and then run it over with the decisive armor, which does expend more of Tombox's resources. But that was game one, let's move on to game two. Alright, game two. Both players have finished siding. Tombox sided in three fairy winds and a curse of the forbidden spell. Oscar probably sided in some shared rides. I don't know about all the other cards he sided, but. Eh, who knows? Alright, they both clear a cut. Oscar will be going first. Both players now get their opening hands. Oh, I can see what Tombox is drawing. A uh, Unicor. I believe he's a Snatch Steel as well. Oscar opens with a pot of duality here. Gets a shared ride, scout, and a skill drain. This is big. All three cards are really, really good. However, depending on the card he picks, uh, this will kind of tell Tombox what kind of hand Oscar has. If he goes with a skill drain, that means he doesn't have a floodgate in hand. Or maybe he wants two floodgates in case there's an MST in Tombox's hand. If he gets a scout, that means he doesn't have a scout in hand. Shared ride means he's pretty confident that he can block Tombox, so it could signify he already has floodgates. What does Oscar pick here? 
Now, judge on, judging on uh, Tom Box's hand here, I don't think he has any MST. Oh, skill drain? I don't think he's gonna go for that skill drain here. Hmm, it's a tough choice. Perhaps he doesn't actually have a floodgate in his hand. But if Ask gets that skill drain, no. Nope. Is he going for the scout? Oh, he's taking his time for this decision. I guess he remembers in his previous game that one fatal misplay can cost him the game. And he's definitely playing a lot more cautious this game. No, he's not adding the skill drain for sure. His choice is between the shared ride and the scout. No, he goes for the scout play. Uh, activate scout, scout search. Adds a sacrifice to hand. Summons out a stealth, equips a sacrifice, puts out a laser clip, and a monolith. Oh, this time he actually emptied out his hand so Tombox will not be able to Trishula. Now that face down, he also set one card. Oh, Tom Box into a fairy win here. Oh, this could not be good for Oscar. This is actually terrible for him. Like, even with a current board on Oscar's side, he would take at least uh, four cards worth of damage. Now, Tom Box is carefully considering his play. He does have a Snatch Steel. But. Oh, Tom Box opens with a Clasalis here, searching for, I believe, I believe he had a unicorn, so it might be a Kaleidoscope. Yes, he's going for the Kaleidoscope. This is kind of similar to the first game, except that there's no laser clip in hand this time. Tom Box activates the Kaleidoscope in hand. Oscar change out uh, Vanity's emptiness here. The Kaleidoscope goes to Graveyard with no result. No, this is not good. Tombox does not have an out for that emptiness, but the Snatch Steel does come into play, takes control of the Clifford Stealth. Oscar has no hand, he's guaranteed to take 2100 damage. He swings, 2100 damage to Oscar here, and sets one card. And passes turn. Snatch Steel gains 1000 life points, and Oscar pays 800, so gains net gain of 200. Now, if Oscar drew a monster, and now he can search for another card, which would be terrible for Tombox, because Laser Clip is on the field, in other words, he could technically bounce that Clifford itself back to hand. Nope, Oscar sets one. Nope, nope. Is he con he's considering setting that card, I believe. I don't think he has a monster. So he summons out a Helix. The Tom Box also has a card set, and that's a fairy win. Oh, Oscar sets one card. This is very scary here. Now, what could that face down be? If it's another floodgate, this could mean trouble for Tom Box if he preemptively activates that fairy win. Oh my god, he's activating his fairy win. Oh, this fairy win's for massive damage. Five cards on Oscar's side, one card on Tom Box's side. This is an 1800 fairy win. I believe this fairy win was a little too early. Tom Box lost a snatch deal. He doesn't have a monster on board yet. I believe he could have held on to that monster a little longer. Oscar still has a phase down, and if that's any sort of floodgate, even if it's a skill drain, it could be really bad for Tom Box. He has a skill drain. Uh, board with a Clifford Stealth would put it to 28 and a 24 monster on board. And most Necros monsters don't have more than 2300 attack points. Tombox uses a Clasalis to search another spell. Just checking the levels in the graveyard to make sure that he could potentially use Exo Mirror as a search. He is guaranteed two searches this turn. One mirror in the graveyard and no monsters on the field. He is a Valkyrus in hand, I believe. Akiris is slightly higher than Clifford's stealth, if that's a skill drain. But I don't believe I have a Shurit in hand. So he adds an Exo Mirror. And now he activates a Kaleidoscope in Graveyard, banishing a Solace to add uh, another spell to hand. 
Which spell is it going to be here? He is adding a kaleidoscope uh, for a double ritual summon play this turn. Right, here we go. If he gets the kaleidoscope first with a unicorn sending a herald of arc light. Oh, it's not going through again. Another vanity's emptiness. This is terrible for Tom Box now. But he does have a Valkyrus in hand, so he can start looping uh, Valkyrus until he gets an out. He can install about four turns based on his current hand. So he passes his turn. Oscar is carefully considering his turn now. He has one card in hand. What could he possibly be considering? There isn't too much he can do at this moment. He could swing for damage, but most likely he is going to be cancelled out by Valkyrius ending his battle phase. So he activates a Clifford uh, Scout to search. He adds a sacrifice to hand and equips it to disc. Then he swings. Tombox responds with the Valkyrius by discarding Valkyrius and banishing a Clasolus in the graveyard. It's Tombox's turn. He draws a Necroz Cycle, I believe. Uh, sends a Bryo into the graveyard to add a. I believe this is a Unicorn. I believe he's going to dis uh, discard that Unicorn to add the Valkyrus back, so he is going to try to thin out his deck as much as possible to block all of Oscar's attack. Oscar just goes for the swing, the safest play here. Tombox is forced to discard and banish for cost. This is not looking good for Tombox. Now when you do this loop of ending the battle phase constantly, you are burning out your deck resources. Now Tombox did just top deck a Brianak. He's starting with discarding a, the Unicorn in his hand to get the Valkyrius back to hand, and then he's discarding his Bryant Neck. So he is discarding that Bryant Neck to add, I believe, a Unicorn. Again, Oscar goes with the safe play. He's gaining pluses throughout. Tombox is losing cards each turn he does this. And Oscar sets another card. This th looks almost unwinnable at this point. With a Vanity's Emptiness and possibly even more Floodgates or pos potentially even a Shared Ride. Oh, Tombox draws into a, a Fairy Wind. I think he may get out of this. He's probably not going to do too much about this. Now again with a Unicorn to Bryonac to Bryonac to search another Valkyrus to hand. Could he possibly get out of this? Now Tombok sets his other mirrors into the back row with the Fairy Wind in case Oscar does have an end phase MST. This is not looking too good, even with a Fairy Wind here. Now Tombok did get a massive Fairy Wind earlier on. Now Tombok discards his Valkyrus once again and now he has to banish, or banishes the other Valkyrus for cost. Tombox draws. Oh my god, he drew into Regeki. So he can, technically he can wipe the board. However, by activating the Regeki, Tombox is guaranteeing Oscar another sacrifice search. If he adds another scout, the scout uh, pendulum summon will be a full five monster summon. And that's not, that's never good. Whenever you're a Clifford player and you can do a 5 Pendulum Summon, you know you've got the game in the bag already. Now Tomlox has to think about this carefully, whether he wants to activate the Fairy Wind first, or he, would he actually activate the the uh, the Raigeki first. The order does matter. Oh, he goes for the Fairy Wind first. Burns Oscar for another 900 life points. Both players take 900 life points. Oh. 
Oscar is now searching for his sacrifice, and sacrifice adds a Clifford Scout. Uh, this is not looking very good. I believe the Raigeki is up to follow. Now, in hindsight, I don't think Tom Vox should have done anything. Instead, he should have just passed turn and took a bit of damage off of Oscar's monsters. As the two sets on Tom Vox side are bluffs, oh, Oscar activates a upstart goblin to draw a card. It completes the scale with a Clifford Stealth and a Clifford Scout. And I don't think oh he's going for the full pendulum summon. Oh, he's calculating whether he wants to do the full summon or is there enough damage? Do, does he need both scouts for the damage? One in defense and one in attack. All the damage added together will mean game. And Tombox has the scoop. He could not follow up with another monster and he's checked his top deck. It was a sure hit and he could have used the Necros cycle if during that turn, but probably not because there was probably another Floodgate card in Oscar's back row. And now we can move on to game three. Now, both players have finished uh, fixing up their sides, and the game is now about to begin. Both players are getting their opening hand right now. So Tombox's hand has a Raigeki in hand, but I don't think he has any search cards. I don't think there's any search cards at all. There's a Clasalis. I guess there's one search card, Clasalis. He can search another ritual spell. But he doesn't have any monster options at all. There's a decisive armor, a Gungnir, and a Clasalis. There's a Raigeki and I believe Kaleidoscope. If he discards his um, Clasalis, uh, he would actually have no plays. This is one of those terrible hands as a Necroz, but you actually need to know how to play out of it. Now, Thomas is considering using the Kaleidoscope. He can't play the Kaleidoscope because he does have enough levels for, uh, I see, he's playing Kaleidoscope here. He's probably going to send out a level 10. Yes. Oh, this is very strange. I bet Oscar will not see this coming. Now, this isn't even exactly a terrible opening. Now, there's the Shooting Star for the level 10 for Gungnir and Plasalis. Now, Gungnir is actually a really good opening against Cliffords, as you do get a free pop. So if you have a Gungnir and an MST, they're guaranteed to fail on two scout searches. But this play did expend a lot of resources. Oscar opens with a Summoner's Art. Straight to the scout here. Now, this scout is probably not going to go through. Activates a Clifford Scout. Activates his effect. Tombox. Now, oh, chains. Gungnir. Discarding the decisive armor. Oscar probably didn't read the card properly on this one. This is actually something you should really pay attention to. Is opening with a Gungnir is actually really, really good. Now, that scout is out of the way. Opens with another stealth sacrifice and sets two cards. Now, if those are floodgates, it wouldn't be too much of a problem as um, Gungnir's effect is a quick effect. It's spell speed 2. So, even with skill drain, Gungnir can chain to skill drain and pop skill drain. Oscar actually forgot to set his last card, but this is a, this is an exhibition match, so uh, we're just going to let it slide on this one. Tombox activates Snatch Steel. Oh, Tombox always had Snatch Steel. <laughs> that was a bit sacky, let's be honest here. And he swings with a Stealth and swings with a Gungnir. That's 21 and 25. I don't think there's any other play now. now. The only card left in hand is Raigeki, but Tombox can bluff it for the Gugnir, as, as if he has another pop. Now, Snatch Deal gains a thousand life points for Oscar. Now, Oscar is considering his options now. He does not have a monster to tribute. Oh, he activates a Monarch Stormforth by sacrificing his own Clifford Stealth. 
And he gets a sacrifice search too with a carrier. Now he adds another Clifford scout. Activate scout, scout search goes through. 800 life points down. And what is he possibly searching for? He adds a monolith. Oh, he's, I believe he's trying to recover cards now. Does a pendulum summon. He does have a stealth and a scout here. Now, do note that Kosalus does have an effect. Any monster that are special summoned from the extra deck can be negated and put to zero attack. And that can be done on the damage step. Oh, is he considering to swing? Is that... I believe he has a skill dream face down. Now, I believe Tombox here is bluffing his way by holding onto that gun near. Oscar is proceeding to end phase and he's getting the draw from Monolith. Now, Oscar gets one draw at the end phase for Monolith because he did attribute uh, a Clifford monster this turn. And we are currently at the end phase and Oscar is considering making a play here. He activates Book of Moon! Book of Moon's uh, the Gagnir! And then he changes Skill Drain! Oh, this way he actually completely dodges! This way he prevents Gagnir in activating and chain to his Skill Drain. But Tom Box here plays Raigeki, wiping the entire board. Oscar offers the handshake and the game is over! The match goes to Tom Box. Now this game, Tombox won because he bluffed a card in his hand, which was the right Geki. Right, well, I hope this exhibition match gave you a bit of insight of how to play Necroz versus Clifford's or Clifford's versus Necroz. If you like what you saw, please give us a like. Uh, if you saw better plays or misplays, please leave it in the comment section below. And of course, always subscribe. It fills up our luck sack meter. And always hold on to your MST.TV.